these news are short and quick. Find out what's what right here, right now. Greetings Phantom Heads and welcome to RomRom.net, the channel sharing the joy of sim racing and to a regular news roundup where we tell you all that's new in the world of sim racing, racing games and anything of interest to petrol heads in all things digital. My name is Serta and I will be your host for this video. If you have any news for us, be it a sim racing league, a different sim racing event or any other news that you think fit here, send us a mail to news at robrom.net. That's news at romrom.net. This last week was a rather slow one, but that doesn't mean we don't have some news and some short news. We're gonna tell you something about Drift 21 and the roadmap that they have, and something about R Factor 2, and something about the R Factor 2 June roadmap and what they are working right now and are gonna continue delivering in the next weeks and months. Also, some shorties about Automobilista 2, Mud Runner, and Dirt 5. Before we start, remember that if you want to be informed about new videos, click subscribe and also click on the bell and become part of the ever growing Rob Rom family. Is it a month already? Yep, it's a month since Drift 21 entered early access phase. See the link to our review up there. And the developers have kept busy as we have been informing you. They have heard our complaints and are working hard on getting the force feedback right and improving the feeling of the cars. As they mention 505 games helping them with the physics, we cannot help but wonder if the other sim studio that has to do with 505 games is helping them. You know who we're talking about. They are grateful for all the input the community has given them and ask for more input. Glad to see that level of engagement with the community. Keep it up. While working on the force feedback and physics, they want to expand the localization you can find on Drift 21 and expand it to more languages. And an especially good idea, they are working on the replay system. Because what good does the best Drift make if you cannot share it with others for bragging rights? If you missed the brouhaha and especially our video yesterday, see the link up there, Automobilista 2 is now considered finished by Razer. By which they mean they have reached a level with the sim where they can start fiddling on it while not calling it a beta. Because it's Razer. And we know this team never stops fiddling. While we have left early access, you can still buy the sim at a reduced price until the Steam summer sale ends. And if you buy it during this time, you'll get the first already planned DLC with Hockenheim Historic and Modern for free as soon as the DLC is released. Mudrunner is going mobile for iOS and Android devices on July 15th. The user interface has been changed so that it works with mobile devices, the rest of the struggle seems to have been kept as it always was. Yikes. I'm not sure how well this will work on smartphones, but can imagine having a lot of fun with it on pads. On the other hand, I was not sure if Motorsport Manager would work well on smartphones and see me spending my time day after day on Motorsport Manager online, so what do I know? Dirt 5 is launching in October 9th. Their marketing machinery keeps bringing on stuff. Amongst all the chaff, they also sent us information about the different series it's going to have. We wonder if there will be much difference in the handling of the series. It's an arcade game after all. We're not going to read it all as it's thin on details. It's going to have all-terrain buggies, SUVs and even trucks, yes, trucks, as well as rally cross and rally cars from the 80s, 90s, classic and modern. And the sprint cars we know for oval dirt races. After releasing Portland International Raceway, which we drove in our last mod test, see the link up there, and the liveries of the 24-hour Le Mans cars, Studio 397 is not stopping, because why should they? They are now working on improving the physics of the GTE cars and as soon as they have those fixed, they'll work on the GT3 cars. A very important other thing they are working on, and I cannot stress enough how very important this is, they are writing documentation for mod makers so those can regal us with even nicer mods. We know documentation sounds unsexy, but believe us, if they get it right, the mods will be just delicious. The better the documentation, the better the mods. A very, very deeply heartfelt thanks from our side for doing this Studio 397. 
They also explain their process for writing and testing code and as somebody who's very knowledgeable in this, I can tell you it's a great process and on par with any other company that takes coding serious. But maybe they should expand it with automated code testing, explicitly regression testing, which is when you test that your changes don't break anything that was working before. Oh, and they have one very important tip for those participating in endurance races using R Factor 2, and we quote verbatim Contrary to what most series have been doing, making sure that the replacement driver joins shortly before the intended driver swap and then having the original driver disconnect next soon after it for now is probably better for all drivers to join the server before the race starts and stay on the server throughout the whole event end quote so now you know for 24 hour races and drivers in different time zones it may be difficult but that's the preliminary results of their analysis of the issues in the Le Mans race they are of course working on fixing this issue Something we expect you to have no issue with is our many videos sharing the joy of sim racing. Check the playlist to the left or the video to the right. Until next time, save fuel, click pickup, and we'll see each other at the podium. Visit romrom.net to connect to fellow sim racers and sim racing fans.